It's time now for The Drive on ESPN Blacksburg, AM 1430, 810, FM 94.1, and live on the web at ESPNBlacksburg.com. It's The Drive on ESPN Blacksburg, and a good evening to all of you. My name is Paul Van Wagner. That guy right there is Brian. He is taking your calls at 961-1430-961-1430. And he's going to help me remember about an announcement coming up next segment? Yes. All right. Got, I got faith in you. Okay. All right. Your whole job hinges on you on you doing that. Ooh, I don't know. I, that's not, not really true. Jason Stamm is joining us. Uh, he has been pouring over rankings of players uh, for the better part of the last uh, probably 72-plus hours. Uh, and you guys just recently posted uh, your top 150 in the East. Uh, anybody in Virginia in that list? Yeah, there's a certain guy that uh, <laughs> named Devon Hunter that you know maybe Virginia Tech fans might have heard from. Uh-huh. Kind of unveiled a you know a certain jersey on Saturday. Right. Yeah. He, uh, yeah. Definitely leads that list. He's pretty much at the top. They've got um, six commits in that group right now. Not uh, bad. Obviously, Devon Hunter being the top one, but um, definitely some other guys still in contention uh, that they you know, that they're in contention with. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, they're looking pretty good in that top. 150 right now, but yeah, leading the way, no surprise there, Mr. Devon Hunter. So, okay, I'm going to throw it out there to you, and I guess let's talk in generalities. Uh, Coach Fuente in his, what essentially is his first full year of recruiting here at Virginia Tech, has landed a kid like Devon Hunter. Uh, This kid, is is he officially a five-star kid, or is he a high four? Uh, Devon Hunter is number five in the country okay, as, so he as far is, as our scout rankings go. He yeah, he's five boss. stars in every bit of it. Okay, so the Hokies land one of the top kids in the nation. Is that Does that, I guess, show uh, the power of what Fuente is doing here at Virginia Tech and also what Virginia Tech does as a whole as a university? Yeah, I, I think it's a very good start. I mean, mm-hmm. perception-wise, it's definitely going to, I think, boost where they are uh, in a lot of different ways. I mean, Hunter is a kid they've recruited since before he even got in high school. Mm-hmm. So this goes back before, way before Fuente got here. Um, I mean, the first time I saw him in person, um, you know, I've seen a film before that. The first time I saw him in person was uh, two years ago at one of their um, summer camps. That was before he really, really blew up. Like, we mm-hmm. knew he was going to be good at then. But I don't know if we thought he was going to be number five in the country. Right. So, yeah, this is a kid who, you know, he's along the same lines. I, I don't know if he's quite – Kendall Fuller coming out of high school, Just he already looked like he had – he probably could have played, at least been in the training camp with an NFL team at that <laughs> point. Yep. So, I'm not, I don't know if he's that good yet, but he's in that kind of company. Like, he's that kind of – talent where this is a guy who may probably is going to be three years and moving on to the NFL. Okay. You look at a kid like this and uh, coming out of Chesapeake, uh, Virginia, Indian River High School, we've talked about this before, in-state battles. This is one. Would we mark this as the battle that Virginia Tech has to win? I mean, he's already verbal, but you got Florida, Tennessee, Alabama, UCLA, Penn State Pitt still on the list. Got to win this one, don't you? Yeah, I mean, he hasn't verbal yet, but okay. it, it sounds like he's probably going to be after the season. I mean, oh, okay. Looking right around December. I don't think he's going to push it all the way to signing day. Um, he is going to take some officials. Whether he uses all five, I don't know. Um, part of the thing with, with, with Devon, and if you get to know him and his mom, um, even you know some of the, the coaches that are working directly with him, uh, Brand Trusty being probably the main guy, uh, they're just they're ultra nice, and I yeah. feel like in a lot of ways it's like they don't want to tell some of these schools that have been recruiting them forever <laughs> no yep. until it gets to exactly then. So you know he's still entertaining places like Tennessee, Michigan, Notre Dame. I don't think he's going to any of those schools. He might go for visits, but it'll be a, a complete shock if he goes to any of those. Mm-hmm. It, it's pretty much between Virginia Tech, Florida, North Carolina, and there's a couple others kind of hanging in there, but, right? This one pretty much is. I'd say it's, it's going to be between those three: Florida, Tennessee. Or I'm sorry, Florida, North Carolina, and Virginia Tech. And it's you know even with Virginia Tech, a lot of it comes down to familiarity. Right. Um, you know he he was got to know Torian Gray so much before he left, and mm-hmm. that's a big reason why he's still interested in Florida is having that relationship already with Torian Gray. Sure. Don Burton. I mean, I don't know. He's 
really, really worked this one very thorough, very well. But also, I mean, that was a stroke of genius to get him to try on the uniform. I don't know if that's going to single-handedly put Virginia Tech over the top, (laughs) but it's moves like that that could easily do that. Yeah, absolutely. So is Coach Burden the one that right now that is is, uh, actively recruiting him? He's the main one. Uh, You've got the entire, both secondary coaches, Brian Mitchell and um, uh, Galen Scott, are also both recruiting him, but... The primary guy, Zom Burton, he's you know been recruiting him longer uh, than anybody. I mean, obviously he's been here another a uh, little more than a year longer than the the new coaches that came mm-hmm. on staff. So there's already that familiarity. Zom is from the seven five seven, so he's got a lot of connections in that area. So yeah, he's he's pretty much the main guy recruiting him. But this this is a staff effort. Even yeah. when they came here, when he came, when he when D- Devon Hunter visited over the weekend, I mean every coach was talking to him, every staff member, everybody. They're, they're really working that one really hard, as they should, yeah. to try to make him feel at home and make him think, you know, feel like, hey, this is what I need to do. I need to stay in state. A lot of times we talk about the ties to school. Um, are there any family ties to Virginia Tech? Do, do any of his coaches have ties to our coaching staff here? Or is this just straight up, you're in the Commonwealth, we love you, come on, be a Hokie? Well, that's part of it. I mean, you know, Devontae Beckett, he played with Devontae last year at Indian okay. River, so yeah. there is that connection. I know I know he and Devontae still stay in touch, um, the, especially after Devontae made his made his mind up last summer uh, that he was going to go to Virginia Tech. I know he worked, mm-hmm. you know, Devon hard, you know, before he went to Virginia Tech. So he's got a lot of um, people, I think, in his corner that want him to go to Virginia Tech. I know his mom likes Virginia Tech. She's not pushed him anywhere. I don't. I don't think he's getting pushed by anybody in his, you know, his inner circle okay. towards any one school. But I do know that his mom I would would like to see him play uh, close to home. Of course, if you look at it that way, North Carolina mileage wise is closer to him than Virginia Tech. Is. Right. So yep. he's going to be staying in state. But I don't. Sometimes you hear people say, "Oh, he needs to stay. He needs to uh, stay home." Right. It's not really home. I mean, yeah. he's still six hours away from home. Yeah. But it is staying in state, and it would be repping his home state. Shouldn't we maybe petition the people uh, in Richmond to maybe make like a, a freeway straight over from you know like somewhere in the seven five seven to Blacksburg? Wouldn't that make sense? A little easier than sixty four to eighty one. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking, man. I mean, you could yeah, probably it's not really straight route. I mean, no. You got to either pay all you know the toll going through Richmond when you cut through four sixty, or you yeah. take a little longer way, you go sixty four eighty one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm just thinking. You know, that could be a, a a big boom for Virginia Tech from a recruiting standpoint. Uh, Malik Willis, where's Virginia Te- Tech at with this young man? Yeah, you know, Malik has been committed for uh, a few months now, but here in the last probably three four weeks, he seems to really kind of at least be looking around a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, he is definitely what we would label a soft verbal commit. Okay. So uh, he did talk to our Chad Simmons, who's our analyst down in Georgia. Um, you know, told Chad that yes, I am still committed. But he's still looking around. The big one, really, to keep in mind, keep in mind here is Georgia Tech. Okay. There's some other ones that I think they are um, talking to him that are trying to get him to visit. But that's really what's going to come, going to come down to is Virginia Tech and Georgia Tech. And the biggest reason is that Georgia Tech is saying, "Hey, we would like you at least to give you a shot at quarterback." Virginia Tech has recruited him pretty much as an athlete, probably going to be on the defensive side of the ball. Okay. Georgia Tech is giving him that uh, at least opportunity to play quarterback or at least get a look at quarterback. And when you play, obviously, you know, the Georgia Tech offense is different than any other offense out there, or most right. offenses with the, um, you know, that old wing T. So he's going to be getting a lot of runs. He'll be doing a lot of options. It's similar to what he's done already. Um, so I think that's appealing. Plus, it's in the state. It's closer to home. Um, I know he mentioned uh, that he, he liked the, the prospect of his, his family getting to see him, you know, not very far away from home. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's still committed to Virginia Tech. But I think it is going to come down. This it may be right up to signing day when he actually fully decides this is where I'm going to go to school. Virginia Tech's still in the lead, but Georgia Tech's not too far behind right now. There's a uh, young man out of Cortland, Virginia, named Tyron uh, Tyron Hunt. Uh, what can you tell me about him? Yeah, Tyron Hunt has been um, you know very high on Virginia Tech's mm-hmm. list for quite a while now, but he also has some other suitors. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's again he's, he's Probably one of the bigger linemen, or one of the, um, if not the best linemen, one of the best linemen remaining in state, right? Uh, as far as target targets go, so um, 
you know, I think he's one that Virginia Tech really needs to get Mm -hmm. because of where they are with linemen, and they've also struggled so far with some other linemen. But he has a top seven right now. He's saying the top seven is Virginia Tech, UVA, NC State, UNC, Wake Forest, Maryland, and Syracuse. I think it's probably more between Virginia Tech and UVA. You know, I don't know UNC how much of a take he is there, Mm -hmm. um, but I think the two in states are probably the the two that are looking more at him. NC State maybe a little bit, but I think Virginia Tech and UVA are probably your top two there. Other than Maryland, I guess he wants to play in the ACC. Maybe he's looking to transition into a little basketball too. You never know. (laughs) Uh, never know okay so you were at practice you were at virginia tech practice on tuesday jason stam who is the starting quarterback for the hokies and i still say it's going to be gerard evans but as far as when they name it i think we we talked about this last week we talk talk about just about every week we do man i think it's going to be you know i really still at this point think it might be bristol week before we know the starter is i mean i the liberty game is just it's kind of like a scrimmage like it is they should have even an easy time with Liberty. If Liberty yeah. poses a threat, and this could be a long piece. So, <laughs> true. That being said, I think that they're going to, you know, Motley and Evans are both going to get a shot. Mm-hmm. Josh Jackson is getting lots of reps right now. I think that's really going to benefit him down the road. Um, he's had a very, very impressive camp, but mm-hmm. I think he needs to be an emergency emergency backup quarterback, which would also make him a red shirt. So. You just don't want to blow a guy's retro like that unless you're absolutely sure he is the guy. And I don't think it's that clear cut by any stretch. I still think Gerard Evans is, is the guy. Brennan Motley, I think, will probably be used very well as a Wildcat quarterback, kind of a change of pace guy. But right. Again, as far as anything official to keep that competition going, <laughs> keep it a little secretive, I think we may be Bristol before we actually have a definitive starter. You talked about something here just a couple of minutes ago, and I want to circle back around to that, and we hear the term quite often. And I guess uh, I'm curious if you can give us a little insight into what exactly is an athlete? Because I know what's not an athlete. I'm not an athlete. You're not an athlete. Brian, no, he's not an athlete either. When we talk about recruiting kids, why are kids recruited as an athlete? What is that? Basically, this means that they're you know, definitely good enough to play somewhere, mm-hmm. but they just don't know exactly where. A lot of it you know, is our guys who are quarterbacks, uh, so they're you – know, Pretty much, usually, about any high school team, your best overall athlete is your quarterback. That's right. the guy who has the ball in his hands most, who you know needs to have quick decision making, quick on his feet. Um, so that's that's usually your best player is your quarterback. But a lot of times, these guys, you know, there's only one quarterback that can play on at, in college. You got a right. lot of other positions to fill. So Virginia Tech, especially, has been notorious for bringing in guys who are. Uh, very good athletes in high school who are you know, usually quarterbacks right. and putting them in other positions. I mean, Bucky Hodges was a quarterback mm-hmm. for just mm-hmm. right off the top of my head, for example. Um, he was recruited as a quarterback, moving, moved into tight end, but an athlete label just means that they're not 100% sure. And that could be either because, um, you know, they just don't know where the, how the roster is going to shake up. They don't know what kind of other commits they're going to get, so they're going to put him in wherever they need him. Or it just means they're going to wait literally until they get to fall camp or spring, you know, if he rolls early, try him in a a few different positions and then give him a position after that. They just don't put a label on him with a position, so the athlete label is kind of the best you can do. Do do the schools put the athlete label on players, or do you guys do it at Scout? Because uh, I've, I've obviously seen, you know, on, on several different uh, boards that, you know, so-and-so is the fourth best athlete in the nation. Is that something that you guys do, or the coaches do that? Yeah, it's a little bit of both. Okay. I mean, you know, with Malik Willis, he he was recruited as an athlete. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there's a lot of times there's guys that we don't know when, when we do the evaluations where he's going to be. So mm-hmm. we'll put him an athlete, um, but some schools will already have a position in mind, so they may not have him as an athlete. But yeah, it, it's a little bit of both sides, and um, you know, just because you know, we, we, again, when we evaluate these guys in high school, you're not sure. Uh, we're, most of the time, unless they've committed, right. what kind of situation they're going to be in, where okay. they would fit. So the athlete uh, label just means that they're going to be good enough to play somewhere. I'm um, just not sure where just yet. Do you ever have anybody yell at you for making them an athlete? <laughs> you know, we haven't had too much with that. The <laughs> The only thing we really haven't had an issue with, this is background to rivals, was um, the quarterback label. And honestly, Scout, we just say it's a quarterback. But okay. 
Um, in Rivals, they had pro-style quarterback and oh, dual-threat quarterback. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah. a lot of these guys um, got upset that they were dual-threat label because they thought that limited them and, and schools weren't looking at them um, as a every-down quarterback because they thought, oh, well, this is like a Michael Vick. And right. obviously we know there aren't too many Michael Vicks out there or even Tyrod Taylors. So that dual threat label, I think, kind of got misplaced a little bit. Some guys kind of didn't like it. So obviously some of us, including the scout, have kind of done away with that. We've gotten back to just quarterback, uh, you know, uh, quarterback label. Jason Stam is a five-star athlete for Scout.com. You can check out the VT Zone. Follow them on Twitter at the VT Zone. Uh, lots of great information on there. Uh, are you guys still running any sort of pre-football kicking off deal for uh, fans out there right now? And where's my app on Android? That's the other question I have for you. <laughs> it's on the way, Paul. All right. I'm say we have a team of engineers. All right. Working around the clock to get on that Android. Now, it, it really is. It's coming. I'm not sure exactly when. I know we've had a new team of engineers come in. They've done a really good job so far, but uh, I know they've, they've got some other stuff on the on the docket. But, yeah. yeah, as far as promotions right now, we, it, for any subscribers, you know, we still have the last year, last week we did the 15% off any tickets. Mm-hmm. Um, you can still get 10% off tickets any day of the year, but now we're, we're really pushing our – um, 10% off in our fan shop. So that's Hokies gear, that's Red Pins gear, any kind of gear you want, any sport, anything in our team shop, 10% off uh, for all subscribers. And if somebody does have an Apple product and they want to download the app, where do they go? How do they do that? Yep, just go to the App Store and look up the, the Scout um, app, and then you can just set Virginia Tech, or you can set however many teams as you want as your favorite teams, and you'll get all the uh, alerts updates, anything going on with all those teams from all of our scout sites within the scout network. Jason Stam, scout.com, the VT zone. Thank you so much, man, for everything you do with us here on the drive. We appreciate it. Uh, I'll talk to you next week, but I'll definitely see you uh, in 11 days at Lane Stadium, right? Oh, yeah, we'll be there. We'll be, I'll be out tailgating pregame. <laughs> I'll look for you. All right, Jason, thanks as always, man. I appreciate your time. All right, cool. Thanks, Paul. All right, there you go. Jason Stam, scouts.com, the VT Zone. Check them out. You can give them a follow on Twitter at the VT Zone. Speaking of following on Twitter, we'll talk about that coming up next. It's The Drive. Carrying the message to other sports junkies.